can, can come into and can hamper a lot of your ability. So either way, next one, a rational function, okay? And this really comes into the only two things we have, guys, for implied domain. We want to work in, you know, we're at least with the only, I'm sorry, the only two functions we're going to deal with, the good and the, the bad, right? Which was a radical and a rational. So when, when we're dealing with a rational, all right, all we're going to do is set the denominator equal to 0. So in, for radicals, you set the radicand greater than equal to 0. For the denominator, you just set it equal to 0. And again, but it's very important, there's a difference, though. When you're solving with the radical, that's telling you all the values that are in the domain, right? When you solve, for z when you solve here, when you solve this, that's telling you all the values that are not in the domain. So, and this one's fairly simple. I already had it factored for you. You're welcome. So x minus 1 times x plus 1. equals 0, all right? Um, and now we can apply the zero product property, so we can set both factors equal to 0. So therefore, x equals 1 and x equals negative 1. So again, when x equals, what that means is when x equals 1 or when x equals negative 1, those values are not in the domain. So if we were to draw like this on a number line, which you don't have to, but if you want to, Wouldn't you guys agree we'd want to put some undefined values of the domain there, right? Some open circles. Yes? And then everything else, though, is good. Oops. So if I wanted to identify the domain here, I'd say negative infinity to negative 1, union, negative 1 to 1, union, 1 to infinity. OK? Now, I'm giving you guys the very basic of the basics. You guys want to look at some hard ones? Yeah. yeah.